My name is Ken and I will show you how I'm leveling my wood, pier, and beam home in this short video. It will provide useful information to anyone re-leveling a floor. I'm not a professional foundation repairman, just a handyman sharing his experiences for you to consider and use at your own risk. You can see by the siding that I have an area that has sagged significantly. Leveling this floor is difficult for a number of reasons. The first reason is this large picture window. You must make sure that the primary lift occurs at the edge of the window where the primary loads are carried by the studs to the header above the window. At the same time, under the window, I must lift the exact same amount as the two primary lift points so I don't break the window. To make matters even worse, one of the piers is located under the middle of the window. The second constraint, the house is surrounded on three sides by a concrete porch with a metal skirt. I can't afford to remove the floor to work safely from above, so I'm going to have to come in from the far side. To get to this sagged area, I have to crawl in uh, with all of my tools. Needless to say, I do not want to drag my jacks and my shins in and out every time. To make matters worse, the crawl space is very tight under the cabin, roughly 8 to 10 inches. I had to use garden tools to loosen the soil and a shop vac to remove the loosened soil get to the sagged area. In short, it's a confined space with limited access. Working in confined spaces presents numerous hazards. You must research and plan to ensure you are protecting yourself and reducing all risk. I use this worksheet. It would be much safer to remove the flooring and work above the floor joists and beams and piers, or work from the outside edge versus entering a confined space. Regardless, if you're going to go into a confined space, you should always have a spotter outside the confined area who can, who can address an emergency. There are numerous laws regulating entering confined spaces if you're unemployed. Jacking up anything is very risky and requires the use of cribbing in case the jacks, existing pilings, beams fail. There's actually legislation regarding jacking as well. The law requires you to use cribbing whenever jacking. Typically, bottle jacks and scissor jacks are used to level a floor. In the short space that I have to work with, the jacks that are commercially available are just too tall. And then scissor jacks, although they could get lower, they just are hard to orient around the perimeter. In the end, I designed and built these stubby jacks. They don't have a lot of capacity or stroke, but they work well in a confined space and they're very inexpensive. The stroke is the same as the thickness of a 2x4 and when they're completely compressed, they're about the same thickness as a brick. Here's a depiction of the beam and pier structure underneath my home. You can see a, a round red pier. On top of that is a four by four uh, beam going from left to right. On top of that are, are three joists. And then on top of that is just a little piece of a representation of the floor decking. The second representation is here. You can see the pier the 4x4 beam, the joist, and the floor decking. I was extremely concerned of being crushed working under the floor. My solution? I added some bricks and shims and cribbing approximately every two to four feet as I worked my way under the structure to ensure that if anything were to fail, I was protected. I decided to add a 4x4 next to the original 4x4 beam. And then I aligned a lift point with each of the floor joists, approximately 16 inches apart. Each lift point uses an 8x8 solid block, two stubby jacks, and cribbing. One jack lifts each of the 4x4s, and the cribbing is under both 4x4s. With this method, either jack could fail, either beam could fail, and the cribbing could still support the house because it is aligned with the joists. This shot's going to be a little shaky. I'm going to basically pan across the length of the extra 4x4 beam that I added. And as we go, we're going to be able to see that at approximately each joist, I added a lift point. And the lift point consisted of an 8x8 block, two stubby jacks, uh, and some cribbing in between the stubby jacks to support uh, the, the, the two beams if anything were to fail. Um, the stubby jacks have very, little, very low capacity, and I wanted to make sure as I'm jacking, I have something to protect me if the jacks were to catastrophically fail. I also found it's kind of handy 
to just put any of my extra shims and cribbing material right up on top of the beams where I'm working so it's available the next time I need it. My plan basically is to go through uh, and adjust each jack about an eighth to a quarter of an inch once every month or two and slowly raise my house back up to its original position. Uh, thanks for watching my stubby jack video. If you're interested in getting some stubby jacks or you have any ideas for me, uh, please send me an email. I would look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again. Bye.